Mary, Queen of Scots, one of the most controversial rulers of her time, an admired beauty and queen, yet notorious for allegedly killing her second husband and eventually being beheaded. There is a lot of mystery and rumor surrounding the Scottish Queen. Among other things, the most urgent of these mysteries is the murder of her second husband, which is still unresolved to this day. Did Mary actually have her husband, Lord Darnley, killed? What evidence was held against her? And what might have been only conspiratorial rumor to overthrow her? What part did the infamous casket letters play in the downfall of Mary, Queen of Scots? We will find out. Mary was born in 1542, a week before father, King James of Scotland, died prematurely. This made Mary Queen of Scotland at only six days old. Until she was capable to rule, Lord James Hamilton and later her mother Marie de Guise reigned in her name. When Mary was still a child, it was initially arranged for her to marry the English King Henry VIII's son, Prince Edward, in order to unite the crowns of England and Scotland. However, the Scots refused to ratify the agreement since Henry demanded Scotland to abandon their alliance with France. Furious, King Henry started a war between Scotland and England, the so-called Rough Wing. The Scottish Parliament refused to give in, and not only that, but Mary also became betrothed to the Dauphin of France, Prince Francis. In the midst of the ongoing war, Scotland became a dangerous place for the young queen. After a great defeat of the Scottish army in Pinky Quill, five-year-old Mary was sent to France for her own safety. At the French court, she received an excellent education and became soon accustomed to the French lifestyle. When Mary turned 16 years old, she was wed to the French Dauphin Francis, who became king one year later. This marriage was only short-lived, as King Francis died the following year. In 1561, a year after the king's death, Mary reluctantly returned to Scotland as a young and beautiful widow. Scotland at this time was in the midst of the Reformation. The country was split in Protestant and Catholics. A Protestant husband for Mary seemed the best chance for stability, but instead Mary fell in love with a Catholic, Lord Henry Darnley. Protestant Scotland was furious and under the supervision of her illegitimate half-brother James Stuart, conspiracies concocted. Against the advice of her nobles and in spite of Queen Elizabeth's expressed displeasure, Mary married Lord Darnley in 1565. But as predicted, her husband's unrestrained lifestyle soon angered her. Mary started doubting her decision to marry him, as Henry Darnley rather roamed the streets of Edinburgh at night and abandoned his responsibilities at the royal court. Lord Darnley was a weak man and soon became a drunkard. He was described as shallow, vain, weak, indolent, selfish and arrogant. Mary ruled entirely alone and considering his immature behaviour, she gave Darnley no authority in the court. Even though Darnley was a womanizer, it did not stop him from being jealous of Mary's secretary and favorite, David Rizzio. Together with other conspirators, he became involved in murdering Rizzio in front of Mary in Holyrood House. She was six months pregnant with Darnley's baby at the time. It appears as Mary forgave Darnley for his involvement in the murder and she excluded him from ongoing prosecution of the treasonous nobles who were blamed for Rizzio's assassination. With Rizzio out of the way, a new threat to Darnley's fragile ego surfaced at court in the form of James Hepburn, Earl of Bothwell. He was not only Lord Admiral of Scotland, but also known for his bravery, yet brutal and ambitious nature. He rushed to Mary's side to successfully undermine a rebellion of Protestant conspirators. Consequently, he quickly became her most trusted advisor. In June 1566, Mary gave birth to Lord Darnley's son, named James. Her husband was notably absent from court, 
as he enjoyed his life as drunk rapscallion who avoided his royal duties and demonstrated his disapproval of Mary's relationship with Bothwell. Through his absence from court, there were rumors of a possible annulment of the royal marriage. It is even said that Mary consulted her advisors for a potential divorce. Nevertheless, when Lord Darnley fell seriously ill with a smallpox, the Queen travelled to his bedside and even arranged to bring him back to Kirkerfield in Edinburgh. In the months leading up to Lord Darnley's death, it is said that Mary presented herself as a caring wife. The apparent reconciliation of their marriage proved to be short-lived. Lord Darnley died under mysterious circumstances in Edinburgh when the house he was staying in was blown up in February 1567. His body was found in the garden of the house after the explosion, yet it appeared as he was not killed by the detonation, but possibly by being strangled to death. Lord Darnley's bizarre death was understood as a murder plot, and soon Mary was suspected of being involved in this tragedy. It was commonly known that the marriage had turned sour, and that Mary grew to despise her husband, as she was angered by his arrogance and reveling. It was not only the Scots who were discussing Mary's role in her husband's death, but also Mary's cousin, Elizabeth I, Queen of England. After the death of Lord Darnley, Elizabeth wrote a sympathetic letter to Mary, in which she reassured her that she did not believe the rumours of Mary's involvement in her husband's death, but she expected her to avenge Darnley's murder. Unfortunately, Mary ignored her cousin, her close advisor Bothwell was one of the main suspects to have killed Lord Darnley, but he was tried and found not guilty. But not only that, Mary married the Earl of Bothwell soon after. To this day, we do not know whether she married him voluntarily. It was rumoured that he had raped Mary and forced her into the marriage. Whatever the case, this marriage shocked the Scottish nobility and people. The Earl was the suspected murderer of Lord Darnley, so by marrying him, Mary appeared even more guilty. Enough was enough, and it was not long before an alliance of Scottish lords raised an army and forced Mary to abdicate in favour of her one-year-old son James. Desperate, Mary fled to England and pleaded in letters for her cousin Elizabeth's support. Mary was hoping for help to regain her throne, but Elizabeth had her imprisoned as she was scared of her cousin to claim the English throne and overthrow her. Moreover, Elizabeth was eager to find out whether Mary was guilty of both murder and adultery. She initiated the conference in which the English Privy Council, where Elizabeth's closest advisers, tried to determine Mary's involvement in her husband's death. During these discussions, the casket letters containing eight letters, two marriage contracts and twelve sonnets surfaced. It was said that these letters were found in a silver casket among Mary's possessions after she left Scotland. The content of these writings was scandalous and explosive. The marriage contracts included a promise on Mary's part to marry Bothwell and a contract signed over a month before Donnie's death. In the sonnets, Mary allegedly pledged her love to Earl Bothwell, trying to seduce him and persuading him into a marriage with her. Moreover, the letters revealed a plot to kill Darnle. Nevertheless, there were doubts that the casket letters were authentic. First, they had been handed over by James Stewart, Mary's ever-conspiring half-brother. And then, they were neither signed and addressed, nor dated. The statements made in the writings were also inconsistent, but when the handwriting of Mary was compared to the letters, they were said to be matching. Even though the council appeared to consider Mary guilty, Elizabeth reflected the evidence and decided that nothing had been proven. As the letters leaked in 1571, Mary was deemed to be guilty by the public. By that time, Mary was locked up in a palace for over a decade. She still had allies who saw her as the rightful queen and Mary was accused of plotting against Elizabeth numerous times. Ultimately, 
Mary was imprisoned for nearly 19 years before being found guilty of a plot to assassinate Elizabeth and seize her throne. Mary was beheaded in 1587. More than 450 years later, it is still speculated if Mary was involved in her husband's murder. Unfortunately, we cannot take the original letters into consideration as they have been lost. Some copies and passed down transcriptions of the letters have been circulating, which has historians still speculating. Many came to the conclusion that the letters were a mix of fact and fiction. It is believed that some of Mary's actual writings were provided with false dates and that denigrating statements were added to the letters. We cannot know for sure whether these letters were staged or not, but it is questionable if an intelligent queen like Mary would be so careless to write explicit letters about a plan to murder her husband. On the other hand, she married a Catholic man with Lord Darnley, all for love, being aware of the resentment this would cause among her Protestant subjects. One can take that as a proof of her recklessness and impulsiveness, but is marrying out of love at the age of 24 a sign of being capable of murdering her husband? Well, we can only speculate. We have to trust the statements of contemporaries who are alleged to have seen strangle marks on Darnley's neck. It is believed that he managed to flee the house during the explosion and then met his demise by the hands of an assassin in the garden of his residence. But did Mary plot his assassination? Some believe that Bothwell was her lover and together they conspired the murder. The proof would be the infamous casket letters, but since their authenticity is heavily doubted and they are lost, we must resort to the fact that Mary married Earl Bothwell only three months after the murder of Lord Darnley. Even though he was found not guilty of the murder, he was the prime suspect and Mary did not even complete the formal period of mourning for Darnley. On the other hand, there is a theory that Mary was forced into the marriage with Bothwell. Bothwell supposedly ambushed Mary while she was traveling and told her she must come with him as there was rioting in Edinburgh. She trusted him and agreed to go with him. He then took Mary back to his castle at Dunbar and raped her. He imposed her to marry him and as she feared being pregnant by him, Mary complied. This theory is not fully proven, but recent investigation through temporary letters and literature appear to validate this version of events. If Mary was truly forced to marry her husband's assassin, there is little evidence to prove her involvement in the murder plot. She might have despised Lord Darnley over time, but why wouldn't she rather have considered an annulment instead of a murder complot? Darnley was widely unpopular with the Scots, and Mary, being the more powerful party in their relationship, makes it appear unreasonable to resonate in killing her husband instead of just annulling the marriage. Moreover, there is speculation that the explosion was aiming at killing both Darnley and Mary, but coincidentally, she was not at Kirkofield at the time the building blew up. What do you think? Was Mary an adulterous, reckless queen? wanted to be with her lover at whatever cost or was she set up and lured into a marriage she didn't want i'll link some of my sources for you to research down below and let you decide